Hi guys, so um, as some of you know, uh, I'm running a training regarding Rust uh, security, like Rust audit and Rust fuzzing. And uh, actually, uh, a lot of you asked me this question, that is, uh, how can I uh, learn and improve my fuzzing target, especially how can I write better fuzzing target to uh, fuzz uh, Rust code? Um, so that's the subject of today. So, um, if you remember on the uh, previous introduction to Rust uh, fuzzing uh, video, uh, I was using like lead fuzzer and uh, onk fuzz. So uh, this time uh, we're gonna use onk fuzz uh, as well, like onk fuzz Rust. Uh, but um, the most important point right now will be this uh, repository. So it will be something really interesting for you if you start writing fuzz uh, targets uh, for Rust code. Uh, because there is actually a lot of them uh, directly available right there. So if you want, you can of course clone this repository and after that just run like cargo run and the target you want to first. Uh, that's something possible. Um, the downside of directly using that will be that um, it will try to download all the projects that are available uh, right there on this repository, uh, all the um, repositories that are expected to be first. Um, so uh, that will be a lot of stuff to download. For example, just to give you an idea, that's the cargo.toml. So as you can see, there is a lot of projects that will actually be cloned uh, and compiled directly locally on your system and so on. So it's going to be huge. So what I will invite you to do uh, will be instead to uh, take a look at the uh, targets and what they uh, write. So basically, it's inside common, the common folder, src lib.arrest. So that's this one right there. And basically, inside this file, you will have a lot of, uh, let me start from the beginning, you will get like a lot of different first targets that have been written by um, the community. And uh, basically, it will also give you an overview of which kind of API are really interesting to be first uh, for Rust code. Basically, you can see right there, uh, we are using some broccoli, uh, the broccoli library with the decompressor new. And you can see that uh, they are uh, using the uh, result capacity and so on in order to provide some um, um, some uh, cursor, uh, some data reader right there. For this one, you can see that we are fuzzing chrono and there is multiple functions that could be interesting and those functions are taking a string. So we need to convert this data, this array of U8 into a string uh, using stdstr from UTF-8. Uh, what's next? There is uh, multiple of them. This one is taking directly uh, U8, an array of U8, or maybe just uh, uh, some, some data that could be converted easily by Rust uh, right there, uh, and so on. You have a bunch of them, I mean, really a lot. Um, Sometimes you have for one thing, you have some more complex one, like this one. Uh, it's a CSS parser. So as you can see, it's trying to pass some data into a token, and then it's trying to dump the data um, into a string. So we are trying to first uh, from data convert that into tokens and once we have the tokens we are trying that trying to convert that into a string and at the end we are uh, comparing um, if token 1 and token 2 are the same. So that's basically like differential fuzzing uh, for um, um, like passing um, like compression decompression. That's the idea. Uh, you are uh, checking that the your result is consistent, uh, the output result is consistent, uh, and so on. You have a, a bunch of them. So uh, I actually uh, already do the, the extraction, so that's uh, what I'm inviting you to do, actually. It's basically, okay, just select a target, you extract this piece of code, and you're trying to just write a, a new project uh, from scratch. So that's what I've done right there with broadly fuzz. You can see that uh, I just create a new uh, 
uh, broadly first project. Inside the SRC, I have my main.rs, that is this one, and I have my cargo.toml. So I uh, selected on first because it's really easy to use in that case. So I have my on first dependency. And then I select uh, broadly, so I directly uh, point into the uh, latest GitHub uh, uh, repository of broadly. And inside my main.rs, uh, we are extracting this first target uh, function. So that's what we have seen. And we have a main loop, uh, so a main function with an infinite loop and the first uh, macro. Uh, and we are calling this first target. And that's all really easy, really straightforward. Uh, and after that, we can just launch the stuff. So in that case, it was like a, a previous uh, uh, previous run basically uh, and we are just doing cargo h first run and the name of the project because there is only one function and the stuff is running and that's pretty much all so um, let me uh, do one uh, with you right now so let's first select a target so uh, i saw that we have uh, uh, yeah let's select that like dns parser so let's select this one. So um, we gonna create a new project. So um, cargo new um, DNS parser first. Okay. Uh, we can go inside this folder. So we are right there. Let's check if it's good. Yeah, DNS parser. So we have the cargo.toml and the SRC. So let's copy that right there for the moment we're gonna handle the uh, cargo.toml so as i mentioned we need um the onc first dependency so let's select this one it'll be there and then we need to uh, import a dns parser so it's the one we select so dns parser let's see inside the cargo.toml right there inside this project uh, where it is it's uh, it seems to be this one i think dns parser so let's select this one um, let me also take a look at that directly uh, always interesting to see uh, what we are getting like if it's something really new something old okay it seems to be pretty old uh, 2018 it's in beta statue okay uh, okay I'm pretty I, I'm I don't know the target for sure uh, but I mean it's, it seems to be pretty old uh, let's see what we have there autumn DNS packet back into byte okay some pull requests okay some pretty old one yeah it seems to be not maintained anymore uh, so yeah, maybe potentially a lot of bug inside. So let's take a look. Um, parser maybe. Uh, yeah, try parse. Okay, let's uh, skip that. I mean, we are not doing code review right now, so uh, whatever. Um, okay, so we have the DNS uh, parser right there. Uh, we need to have the uh, main. Uh, so let's take the uh, template uh, we have used previously for broadly so it's basically this one so let me copy past that uh, as i mentioned we need to have a first target so in that case it will be this one we we'll just overwrite that and uh, yeah that's all and we should be good to go as you can see we have our first target that's taking uh, an array of u8 we are providing that to dns parser packet parse and uh, yeah that's uh, that's all we have the dns parser that is right there okay seems to be good let's um give a try cargo hvers run and the name of the folder is this one dns parser first so it's compiling as you can see compiling on first and the dependency compiling hvers uh, as well and it's uh, running Okay, so for the moment, nothing is crashing. So maybe uh, I was a bit too quick saying that there is some bugs. I mean, when there is some old piece of code, I'm always worried about that. So uh, let's see. I mean, I will let the stuff running and uh, maybe in the next video, I will uh, show you some uh, bugs uh, that have been uh, triggered. 
uh, basically you can do the, the same uh, atom I mean we would invite you to do the same um, and um, something possible of course it's to improve uh, the, the fuzzing as you can see we are, we are just starting from like an empty corpora uh, that's not really good it's always better to provide some uh, in some valid input and so on. So in that case, uh, it will be some uh, DNS uh, packet uh, that you will need to provide. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the idea. Uh, something really good could also be to uh, analyze uh, the stuff. As you can see, it's the uh, implementation for packet parse. So that's the function we are uh, fuzzing. And in that case, uh, we have some uh, whisk capacity. That's why uh, I was telling you that uh, I'm pretty sure we will get some bug maybe. Uh, header question. Uh, it will depend on the header parsing if there is some verification, because otherwise we can maybe have some out of bound, uh, out of memory vulnerability. That's what I mean. So the header parse is also triggered. Okay, there, there is checking the length. Okay, maybe yeah, maybe it's not so. Maybe it's even really good. I don't know. Oh no, it's not. Okay, so that's uh, that's it's pretty bad. Uh, okay, that's for writing. So no, it's okay in that case. We have a panic. I mean, panic is always really bad, especially in in library like this one. But since it's on the writing side, it could be good. Um, could be legit. I mean, okay. So we're checking the size. Uh, and I think it was question. Big Indian read U16. Okay. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, so I will let you know what's, uh, what is happening, but that's the idea. So I really invite you to, um, I don't know, pick some other uh, target. I mean, you have some uh, GIF stuff, a Flack, HTML parser, you have some uh, JPEG. I mean, there is really a bunch of them. And I also invite you to um, create some pull requests for new targets uh, that you have seen or, or even written by uh, yourself. Um, it's not because uh, they are doing that that it's the best stuff to do. I mean, there is potentially some uh, other APIs that could be really interesting to fuzz. So that's why uh, I think it could be interesting. I mean, if you are focusing, I mean, as I, uh, I have what I've done basically, I'm taking a look at the DNS parser. As you can see, I um, detect that, okay, packet uh, parse. So there is this function, this API parse that is interesting. It will maybe call those other function. Uh, always interesting to take a look at the um, unit tests. So basically, a packet parse in that case, packet parse. So it seems to be the, the most um, useful API uh, in that case. Uh, maybe you can find some other one. Uh, maybe if you want to first some uh, sub part of it, you can definitely first the header uh, that was um, used previously um, and so on. So uh, as usual, let me know on the comment uh, what you think, what you would like to see next. Uh, I have uh, used uh, onkfuzz uh, in that case, uh, as you can see, really easy to use. Um, and uh, as usual, you can um, take a look back at this introduction to Rust fuzzing um, uh, series. Uh, and you have all the resources directly available on, on my website. And if you want to go deeper, uh, of course, there is my training that is also uh, available. Um, so that's the price with the European VAT. Um, but um, basically, uh, you will learn uh, what and um, everything you will need to learn to do uh, code editing and fuzzing on a Rust project. So see you in the next video and uh, have a good day.